Hey there everyone, I'm Jordan at Afterburner Automation and today I want to talk about the top seven challenges of RPA. My last course went over some of the exciting benefits that RPA can offer, but it's important to recognize the challenges that RPA brings before deciding if it's the right tool for your needs. I'll be taking you through seven of the challenges that are most commonly encountered when a company adopts RPA. Let's take a look. Similar to the previous course, I want to make sure that I'm as honest as possible with you about what RPA can and can't do. So while this particular course's focus is on the challenges that RPA can create when implemented, I'll also be countering each point with a silver lining that mitigates or otherwise addresses each particular challenge. As I've mentioned, I strongly believe that RPA is a powerful way to improve the way we work, and so my goal with this course is to give you the information you need to make an informed decision about RPA, while also providing you with the confidence you need to tackle these various challenges. If you've already spoken to a sales team about purchasing their RPA platform, you're most likely pretty excited about all the possibilities that RPA can provide. I've personally been on a lot of these pitch meetings and the sales teams do a really good job of maximizing the benefits of their product while minimizing the challenges. And so the first challenge of RPA, keeping realistic expectations, starts before you even purchase the product. A typical question that prospective RPA customers ask is, can bots do X? Unless X is completely outside the technology sphere, you're not likely to get no as an answer from an RPA salesperson. No matter what they tell you, bots can't solve every problem. While RPA is well suited for repetitive, rules-based work, it's not suited for work that requires a large amount of visual recognition or future prediction. For example, while RPA would be the perfect tool for searching an employee database for employees that haven't had a pay increase in the past two years, it would be the wrong tool to analyze those data points and predict if a pay increase would result in increased loyalty from that employee. That work is much more suited for artificial intelligence technology, which when combined with RPA results in a concept called intelligent automation. A previous course in this learning track detailed the differences between AI and RPA, and a future learning track for business users will include a deep dive into intelligent automation. But for now, it's important to approach RPA sales pitches with a realistic view of what bots can and can't do. With that in mind, though, it's also important to acknowledge the silver lining that bots can solve most problems. It's common in my experience that automation ideas are well suited for RPA, especially when applied to high volume, repetitive tasks like I mentioned in previous courses. In general, these types of tasks have explicit rules that lend themselves to RPA. So while I've seen a lot of bot ideas that are not good candidates for RPA, I typically keep in mind that with a good enough process map, almost anything can be automated using RPA. With so many potential automatable processes out there, another challenge of RPA becomes selecting appropriate processes. Just because you can automate something doesn't mean that you should. In fact, throughout your RPA journey, you'll most likely leave more bot ideas in the planning phase than those that make it to development. Despite all the benefits of RPA we mentioned in the previous course and how much it can provide for your business, some processes are just not worth automating. There's a lot of factors to consider, such as the development complexity, future maintenance needs, time saved, value captured, and more. These factors need to be considered before automating a process to ensure that you don't spend your limited time and resources on a project that only saves five minutes a day. On the other hand, the silver lining is that these types of processes are relatively easy to identify. If you're personally performing the manual process, you have a lot of visibility on the benefits of automating that process. However, in larger RPA programs, you may be automating a process for someone else. In those cases, it's important to engage with a subject matter expert, someone who's an expert on the manual process, so that you can ask them pointed questions about the value of that process. This should allow you or your program manager to make an informed decision about whether or not a process is even worth automating in the first place. Because many RPA programs build bots for business customers, both internal and external, a challenge can arise when there's insufficient engagement from the business. Throughout my courses, engagement typically means availability to properly map a process, answer questions related to development and value, and analyze the results of bot runs for correctness. I'll refer to the people who perform this role as subject matter experts, and while an engaged subject matter expert increases the speed and reliability of a bot, the alternative is also true. 
absent subject matter experts slow down automation. Before, during, and after the bot development process, there's going to be roadblocks due to security access needs, unclear process maps, and lack of test data. A subject matter expert's availability and level of engagement will directly affect the success of navigating these roadblocks. That being said, when you build a bot or two within a certain target application or for a certain customer, you start to discover a silver lining to this dilemma. Automating a process makes you a subject matter expert. For example, when I started my RPA journey, I had several customers who wanted processes automated within SAP, which is a target application used for customer records management, among other things. When I built my first bot for that customer, I had what seemed like an endless number of questions along the way about improvements to the process, where to retrieve certain data tables, and just in general how SAP functions as a target application. However, after automating another SAP process, I really quickly realized that in some cases I knew more about the target application than my subject matter expert, and I was able to make suggestions as to how to improve certain processes based on those lessons learned while automating. Of course, everyone's different, and the types of processes you automate can determine how much expertise you gain in a target application. But in general, you'll learn a lot about any target app by automating against it, reducing that need for external subject matter experts as you get more experience. Working with business customers to create bots can streamline the bot building process, but at a certain point, automating for someone else will create a challenge related to change management. Change management is the process for smoothly implementing change in a large group or company by preparing and supporting affected employees, as well as monitoring the results of the change after it's been implemented. As you can imagine, deploying a bot to perform a human being's process can cause confusion. If a bot's deployment replaces a manual process or the bot's deployment creates changes to other processes downstream of that process, it's imperative to communicate those changes to the relevant stakeholders so that they can avoid confusion. For instance, my very first bot replaced a manual process for validating and approving timesheets. The implementation of this bot significantly changed hundreds of supervisors' weekly routines, and because we didn't properly utilize a change management process, we got hundreds of emails from confused supervisors that hadn't been trained in the new process. Fortunately, the silver lining for this challenge is that stakeholders are typically really appreciative of any communication when it comes to implementing an RPA solution. Despite those setbacks I encountered when deploying that timesheet bot, Coordination with our change management team allowed me to quickly communicate the new process to the supervisors and provide some basic training on its use. Almost all of the affected parties were instantly appreciative of this basic communication, and I even got some thanks for saving them time every other Friday. Regardless of your level of communication and change management, one of the major challenges that you'll encounter with RPA is managing employee resistance. There are some people that actively push back against RPA being implemented in their departments or companies for various reasons, and this can significantly slow down an RPA program's progress, especially when it's just getting started. Unfortunately, a lot of people simply don't understand what RPA is. In fact, since you're watching these videos, I'd assume that until recently, you didn't fully understand RPA yourself. There are several misconceptions that people have similar to the ones that I had when I first started my RPA journey. Many employees fear that they're being replaced by a robot, or that digitization of processes will cause more problems than it will solve. I've even had more than a few people relate their fears about RPA becoming sentient and taking over the world. Just as an aside, if you're dealing with customers that don't understand RPA, don't name your bot Skynet or HAL or anything else like that that conjures up visions of dystopian futures. Just trust me. Anyway, the silver lining in this challenge is that understanding RPA is quick and easy. These courses here should be proof of that fact alone, but most of the time, wary employees don't even need the detailed explanations that you're getting. Instead, many times, just asking why a person is resistant is enough to start a conversation and correct a misconception. As an example, despite the generally positive reception I received on my timesheet approval bot, I was also met with a particular individual who was not only unhappy about the change, but also attempted to prevent its implementation very vocally on a couple of large meetings. When I spoke to this individual later, all it took was a private demo of how the bot worked. Then on the next large meeting, the same person was still very vocal, but this time they were giving all kinds of ideas for other processes that could also be automated. 
We've spoken a lot about challenges to RPA related to people and processes, and I'd argue that those are some of the largest roadblocks to starting an RPA program in a company. But there's also challenges related to technical and operational issues. It's unfortunate, but there are many RPA sales teams that will make misleading claims that RPA doesn't require IT support. Let me say it here, unequivocally, IT involvement in RPA is imperative. While I do agree that the low barrier to entry of many RPA products allows people of almost any background to automate, there are several reasons to include IT personnel in your RPA program. Initial installation of the RPA platform itself can be technically demanding, especially in a large company with its own security procedures and configuration requirements. More complex processes can be difficult to automate without experts that can coach your team on basic software development principles and the best usage of different tools provided by the RPA platform. Finally, the administration and stability of the control room or orchestrator can be technical as well, with interactions between back-end databases, cloud servers, and your own company's custom integrations that require a high level of knowledge related to your company's technical infrastructure. The silver lining here is that IT involvement can be minimal. While there are ongoing technical requirements to keep an RPA program running smoothly, these requirements can be handled by a very small dedicated team or even by an existing IT department without much need for expensive training. To give you an example, I've worked on an IT team for a Fortune 500 company that was dedicated to supporting an RPA development program of around 40 developers with hundreds of complex bots saving the equivalent of around 100 full-time employees. Our team required only six people to function, and even that was mostly due to the need for enforcement of standards and bot maintenance, rather than the technical requirements of the product itself. And that brings us to the final challenge of RPA, but one that I think is maybe the most unanticipated by people unfamiliar with it. That challenge surrounds the ongoing maintenance of bots. One of those frequent misconceptions that I encounter with new RPA users is that once a bot's built, It'll work as long as needed without the need for intervention. While the thought is nice, the truth is that all bots require ongoing maintenance. Changes will occur that affect target applications or processes for bots already in service. Bots will be written that work on the builder's workstation, but not on a runner. Product owners will request additional functionality to existing bots. When those things happen, bots need to be tweaked or even completely refactored to accommodate. This usually comes as a surprise to leadership when it comes up because that's a cost that's hidden really well by RPA sales teams and it can kill a fledgling RPA program that hasn't prepared for that cost. Fortunately, this challenge can be overcome with our final silver lining, that centralization and standardization make maintenance simple. Sometimes all it takes is an awareness of this challenge in order to come up with a simple plan to handle future maintenance. When setting up a new RPA program within a company, I typically recommend the formation of a center of excellence or some other central governance group that handles standardization of best practices surrounding bot development, development of a shared code base that provides reliable solutions to common automation problems, and rules regarding the bot lifecycle process. Taking this step early on in your adoption of RPA is invaluable when a bot breaks and the original builder is busy or no longer with the company, since the maintainer knows what to look for, even if they don't have intimate knowledge about how the bot works. And that's it. Now that you know some of the common challenges that people face when implementing RPA, you should be better equipped to overcome them. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. For more RPA training, check out the next video here, or watch everything in order right here. Subscribe to my channel for updates on new content and become a patron to get access to personalized RPA support. But until next time, I'm Jordan at Afterburner Automation and I hope this helps you build better bots.